Do you snore? Do you snore loudly? Do you find yourself waking up feeling groggy or feeling tired all day, even though you know good and well that you had a good night's sleep? Does your loved one say that you often wake up in the middle of the night choking or gasping for air? If so, you may have sleep apnea. Now, sleep apnea is not just about snoring, and it's actually not funny. It is a very serious disease because it can lead to things like high blood pressure, abnormal heart rhythms like atrial fibrillation. It can even lead to heart attacks. So if you think that you or a loved one may have sleep apnea, keep watching. I'm Dr. Frida. If you have not done so already, please be sure to follow me on Instagram. That's at Dr. Doc Frida. Also, at the end of this video, I have a freebie for you. Something that's going to help you to live a healthier life, to have a better life and a better you. Now, sleep apnea. What is sleep apnea? Sleep apnea is when you stop breathing for periods of time while you are sleeping. Apnea means the absence of flow, the absence of airflow. So when we breathe, air normally flows through your nose, your mouth, through the back of your throat or your pharynx, down through your windpipe or the trachea, and into the lungs. We all have muscles around our throats or our pharynx. These muscles help us to speak, they help us to swallow. And when we sleep, it's natural for these muscles to relax some. But if these muscles relax too much, or if they're compressed, it can cause a narrowing of the airway. Now, if you get this narrowing of the airway, it can cause you to make a sound as you breathe or to snore or to snort. But if this airway is compressed all the way while you sleep, if it is blocked or obstructed, it causes you to stop breathing for periods. And this is the obstructive sleep apnea. So the classic scenario is a person who's snoring. They're snoring louder and louder. And then all of a sudden, there's no noise. They're not making any sound because at that point, they're not breathing. Their airway is obstructed. After this period of silence or no flow, then they may gasp or snort or choke. And that's when the airway is opening again and they're trying to catch up on these breaths, trying to get the oxygenation going again. This is a classic presentation for obstructive sleep apnea. Now, a lot of times the people who snore, even though it's very loud and everyone in the house knows that they snore, a lot of times they don't even know that they snore. And if they fall right back asleep after these gasping episodes, they won't even recall that these episodes are happening. So when people have obstructive sleep apnea, it's oftentimes a surprise to them unless they have loved ones or bed partners who have told them. So what are the symptoms of sleep apnea? Well, one is loud snoring. You also can have daytime somnolence or being very, very tired during the day, even though you've had a large quantity of sleep. You may fall asleep easily, which is what puts people with obstructive sleep apnea at risk for accidents like motor vehicle accidents. And if you have sleep apnea, you may also wake up with a dry mouth or a sore throat. You may get morning headaches, be very groggy throughout the day. You can also have just low energy if you're a person who has obstructive sleep apnea. Now, there are two types of sleep apnea. The obstructive sleep apnea, which I just described, then there's also something called central sleep apnea. In central sleep apnea, it's when the message from the brain is not being delivered properly to the muscles to tell yourself to breathe. But obstructive sleep apnea is the one that is more common and the one that we're usually talking about when we say sleep apnea. What are the risk factors for obstructive sleep apnea? Well, a family history of sleep apnea is a risk factor. Also, if there's something that's different about the anatomy, if you're a person with a very small mouth or a narrow airway, especially if you have a relatively large tongue, that can put you at risk for obstructive sleep apnea. 
Obesity is a very big risk factor for sleep apnea, being obese or overweight, especially if you have a thick or a wide neck. If your neck is greater than 17 inches in circumference, if you are a man, or if it's greater than 16 inches, if you are a lady, that puts you at a higher risk for obstructive sleep apnea. If you are a heavy alcohol drinker, or if you take any type of a sedating substance, especially close to bedtime, that could put you at risk because the airway muscles may really relax and it may be more difficult for you to arise or awaken during an apneic episode. So definitely alcohol use or any type of a heavy sedative use can put you at risk for sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea is more common in men than women, but women can definitely get sleep apnea as well. Postmenopausal women are at a higher risk and having an increased age, being elderly is also an independent risk factor of sleep apnea, but children can get sleep apnea as well, especially children with large tonsils. So what are some of the health risks, some of the consequences of having untreated obstructive sleep apnea? Well, one is that daytime somnolence, that being sleepy, because if you are not getting good rest and you're sleepy all the time, you're at risk of falling asleep in the middle of important activities, such as driving. Some studies have shown that patients with obstructive sleep apnea get into more motor vehicle accidents than patients who do not have sleep apnea. So it is serious. Other risk factors include cognition. If you are blocking your airway and you're not getting proper oxygenation and you're sleepy, well, then this could affect your concentration and your cognition. It can make you forgetful. You are also at a higher risk of having a stroke if you have sleep apnea. You're at a higher risk of having a myocardial infarction or a heart attack. And you are at risk for having abnormal heart rhythms, arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation. You're also at risk for something called pulmonary hypertension. So there are some very real physical consequences to having obstructive sleep apnea. So how do you know if you have sleep apnea? See, everyone who snores does not have sleep apnea. If you snore a little bit, if you make some sounds, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have sleep apnea. Now, if you are one of those people and your loved ones have told you that you stop breathing frequently in the night, then yes, you very likely do have sleep apnea, but you should get a professional diagnosis. There are physicians who specialize in sleep medicine, and you can actually have a sleep study done, something in the lab called polysomnography. And that's when you get your most accurate diagnosis of sleep apnea. But there are also some things called HST or a home sleep test where you can be tested at home to see if you have sleep apnea. The gold standard though is the in-lab test, the polysomnography. And what are the treatments? There are treatments, there are some lifestyle adjustments. If you are obese and if this obesity especially is causing you to have a very thick neck, then weight loss is definitely something that can help the obstructive sleep apnea. But then people and people with skinny necks can have sleep apnea as well. So in some cases there are devices that can be worn, but the most effective treatment is a CPAP or continuous positive airway pressure. And that's pretty tricky and they have you know different devices trying to make it a little less bothersome, but it's when you literally wear a device or a mask on your face or on your nose and it helps to keep that airway open even while you sleep so you don't get the obstruction, you don't get the blockage and you get good oxygenation all through the night. So definitely being properly diagnosed so that you can be treated is very important. Now, I told you I had a freebie for you at the end of this video, and I do. I want you to hit that link in the description and download 10 Healthy Habits for a Better You and a Better Life. These are just some things that are a checklist of things that you can be doing in everyday life to make sure that you're having your healthiest, happiest life. I live by this checklist. I find it to be very helpful for me, and hopefully you'll find it to be helpful as well. If you have not done so already, 
please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification button. That way you'll be notified of when I'm doing YouTube lives. That's when I answer your medical questions in real time. And we actually have a back and forth discussion. I love it. So subscribe and hit the notification button, please. Again, follow me on Instagram at Dr. Dot Frida. If you haven't done so already, that's when you see what I'm up to in my daily life, what I do to live my healthy, happy life, different community service, and just my random thoughts and things that go on in life. Again, I thank you as always for watching. I appreciate you. And if you do believe that you or a loved one has obstructive sleep apnea, remember again, it's not a funny thing. It's not just ha ha ha, that person snoring. It's real. It's a real disease with real consequences. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Frida.